Live from the Business Radio X studio inside Renaissance Bank, the bank that specializes in understanding you. It's time for North Fulton Business Radio. And hello again, everyone. Welcome to another edition of North Fulton Business Radio. I'm John Ray, and we are coming to you from our virtual studio. We're not back inside Renaissance Bank on Windward Parkway in Alpharetta, but we're looking forward to that. Um, the, the folks at Renaissance are busy right now, and they're busy helping small businesses with a lot of their needs, including second round PPP. And here's what my suggestion to you is, folks. If you... Uh, If you like the big bank experience of where you're at right now and you like automated uh, voices and you like 1-800 numbers and all that kind of stuff and you don't want to really want to talk to a real person, don't go to Renaissance Bank. But if that's what you're looking for in terms of better service, if you're looking for personal service, um, Renaissance is big enough, I have found personally, to be uh, handle your needs small enough to do it in a personal way. So go to, go to renaissancebank.com, find their local office, some 200 across the South ready to serve you and give them a call and go make it, make an appointment and go see them. And I think you'll be glad you did. Renaissance bank, understanding you member FDIC. Now I want to, I want to welcome John Fitzpatrick. John is the president and CEO of force marketing. John, welcome. Thanks for having me, John. Great to have you. Uh, So tell us about you and Force Marketing. How are you serving folks out there? Yeah, so Force Marketing is a uh, marketing technology business. We specialize the auto industry. We work with car dealers all over the country. Uh, For those that don't uh, realize, there's actually 17,000 new franchise dealers all over the U.S. And uh, only about a thousand of those um, stores are owned by the big publicly traded brands like AutoNation and Penske. So there's 16,000 small business owners, uh, probably like a lot of your listeners, um, that have anywhere from one to 10 stores in uh, in their local market. And uh, we help them uh, get more efficient with their advertising and marketing spend uh, and also get more personalized in their communication to their consumers. And um, we've been doing that for the last 15, 16 years. Wow. Congratulations on uh, uh, surviving a lot of ups and downs over time. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, two, two crises, right? We saw the financial <laughs> one hit early on in our, in our lifetime uh, from a business perspective and didn't think we'd see something like that again. And then obviously saw something totally different, um, but, but equally as impactful uh, last year. So thank you. Yeah, there's, 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 um, there's a lot of good people in the business that have allowed us to weather that. We, we leaned on the great culture. So that's, that's terrific. Uh, that's terrific. Now, why, why are you involved in the automotive space? I mean, you've got a personal connection, uh, there, I think, right? Yeah, that's right. I, I really grew up in the store. I was the kid on the golf cart driving around the, my, my dad's lot. He had a long career in uh, auto, uh, still in, in, in many cases does. And uh, so I got to see through his lens as an operator, um, a general manager of big volume stores, uh, mostly in the Southeast. Um, I grew up in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, that's also where AutoNation, which is our country's largest retailer, um, is, is located in the late 90s, early 2000s. He uh, joined the executive team there and helped start AutoNation and build that brand up. And so through the corporate lens, but also through the, the retail you know, uh, dealership lens, sort of through him, I got to learn a lot about the business. And um, you know, one of the things that I saw alive and well as an opportunity uh, from a business perspective would be to drive uh, efficiencies in the advertising and marketing uh, of each dealership. And I understood that uh, there was a, a lack of data and technology being used, lack of personalization. Uh, as many of you may have experienced buying your car. There's nothing more frustrating than you know when you buy a car from a dealer and Two months later, they're asking you to trade your car in. And you're like, I just traded my car in to you, actually. And <laughs> now you're telling me to come back in. It's just, it's disconnected. And that's a, that's a problem, right? I mean, especially in today's world where we expect uh, our, our retailers to know a lot about us and to properly communicate with us. Um, we, uh, we've been very, very focused on helping dealers, uh, you know, uh, evolve that dealer to customer shopping experience. And uh, it's what our tech does. It's what our our services piece does. And, um, 
And so, uh, you know, we, we feel like we're, we're helping in a big way in that category. You mentioned how auto dealers are, are a lot of them are small business owners. And I would imagine they have the same issue that other small business owners have when it comes to marketing themselves. A lot of what they might do before you intervene, uh, I'll say is, uh, maybe seat of the pants. I mean, as you say, it's not based on data and, and the results that come from that data. Yeah, it's getting a lot better. Uh, don't get me wrong, but there is still an element of spray and pray. And, um, and you know, the, 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 there's usually a lot of um, cooks in the kitchen, right, when it comes to the marketing and the advertising um, of, of a business, right? And that's no different in a dealership environment. There's also a lot of, a lot of our uh, dealer partners are, are family owned and operated and have been for decades, right? Um, the grandfather, the great grandfather made us open the first location and now they have 20 locations and, and uh, it's the grandson really running the show. And so, but, you know, uh, granddad is still involved and dad is still involved and um, there may be some, some siblings involved. And so, you know, it, it, and, and I know a lot of business owners see this. And so there tends to be a lot of opinions and uh and different people want to try different things and then they have different relationships with different marketing agencies or marketing partners that claim that they can come in and help you know drive a a business need and and so what happens is there's a, just a fragmented communication channel and um you're you're they're trying different things that that will work and and um and oftentimes that just leads to uh a poor experience for the consumer and so what we uh, what we're really built around is dialing into a dealer's first party data, the, the data that they already sit on that they, they understand who they've uh, sold and serviced cars to for the, you know, for decades. I mean, it's very, very often that a, that the a dealer partner of ours has been in operation literally for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Um, we'll only go back seven years. We've recognized that that is the most rich data going back only about seven years. So, and, and, and we'll really understand, um, you know, who, who has done business with them in the past and, we we segment out those audiences and then we you know we put in place um products and solutions so that they can in a more personalized way better communicate with their past customers and then their prospective customers as well and so uh, a lot of that is eliminating uh some of those cooks in the kitchen and sometimes um that's not easy but at the end of the day it's what's best for the business and uh and and we bring in strategy and we bring in goals and outcomes that they're looking to achieve you know, oftentimes, John, and, and I'm sure your listeners know this, you, you can get distracted in, in today's digital marketing environment focusing on, you know, funnel metrics like cost per click or bounce rate or, um, you know, uh, time on site. And, and those are important metrics. But the, the, metric, in, the metrics that are most important are, are the ones that are driving your business forward. And in, in our case, it is sales of new and used vehicles and uh, what we call ROs, which are repair orders. How many repair orders is the service lane producing? And, um, and really, we, we stay, we stay uh, connected to the outcome. So when we have an advertising spend, we tie it to a cost per dealership, so, uh, a cost per um, uh, vehicle sold or a cost per vehicle service. And so, you know, anybody that's listening that, that's owning, that owns a business, I would, I would say, uh, <clears throat> even if you're not a car dealer, what we have found in auto is tying it to the outcome that you're looking to generate, um, regardless of the, the advertising and marketing expense, uh, in our opinion, and what we have seen over some time now, uh, is, is, the best, is the best way to anchor your strategy. So uh, talk a little bit about... Um what what are the first steps when you engage with a new client? Talk about how that works and how, uh, you know, I'm interested in hiring you to overhaul my marketing. Um, what? How do you engage with me and what are kind of the some of the um, uh, first steps in changing what I'm up to? Yeah, well, first of all, we, we are uh, solely focused on the auto category. So sure. you have to be a new car dealer um, to, uh, to, to want to speak with us. However, I, I think we look at things, um, in, in a way in which, uh, many top end marketing and advertising, certainly technology driven ones, uh, look at things and that's the connectivity to data, right? How much data can you get your hands around? And then there's a component to data, which is not all data is perfectly clean. In fact, most 
is is not most data sets are not perfectly clean so you got to go through a cleansing process to figure out um of the data you're collecting uh you know out of your crm or out of your management system um you know how much of that is is still relevant and how much of that is needs to sort of been thrown out uh, we, you can also connect in, in almost any category with third-party data sets that'll give you an idea of the prospects in your market. Uh, and certainly any of the partners um, at uh, Facebook or Google or Bing or um, YouTube can, can help with that with their tools uh, so that you can be prospecting the right folks. But our, our focus is to connect our tech to their, to their uh, data centers in a dealership, um, you know, clean the data, normalize it, and then start audience segmentation. And so in our world, uh, a different audience set might look like a uh, purchase buyer of a car versus a lease buyer. Those are two different buyers, right? They're both buying a car, but they go about it differently. One's focused on the, the total uh, uh, you know, uh, vehicle value. The other one's very focused on a payment value. And, um, and, and can they afford the monthly payment you know, um, versus you know, do I want to bring the MSRP of the car as low as possible? And so you know, knowing that, and then by the way, there's a lot of other uh, audience sets, right? I was just giving you one example, but, but understanding how to bucket those folks, you can then figure out how to better communicate with each audience segmentation set uh, in a more personalized, more data-driven way, right? We're going to take all of our lease buyers and we're going to first see when is their lease expiring? You know, if it's three to six months up, let's remind them that it is. Let's remind them that with current Ford incentives, they can lower their monthly payment and get top dollar for their trade. Let's not do that every day, though. Let's do that when it's relevant to the consumer. And I know that I'm sure a lot of your listeners, you've either gotten an email or a, or a mail piece in your, in your mailbox, and it was totally irrelevant to where you were in the life cycle ownership of your vehicle, and it frustrates you. And we are looking to eliminate that. That's waste ad dollars for the dealer. That's a poor customer experience for the consumer. And that might give them an opportunity to start looking to another, another brand or another dealer in their hyper-local marketplace. And so if we can improve that, we know that we can improve their business in a big way. And, uh, and that's, what we, that, that's sort of what we would focus on. A small example, but think about that across a lot of different audience segments um, and a lot of different channels, right? We're focused on omni-channel too. So uh, while digital is important in auto, for example, the average person spends a little over 70 days from the start of searching for the, the right vehicle till the actual purchase. So that's a long journey. J.D. Power has told us that across those 70 days, they're spending more than 14 hours online alone, making, uh, educating themselves and trying to figure out the right, the right price, the right financing, the right trade-in value. And, and so if we can understand uh, that the consumer uh, is 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 operating and interacting with this purchase across uh, an omni-channel experience. Um, they're not just going to Google, right? It's part of it, but they're also going to Facebook. They're also watching video at an increasing rate, especially when you see the cord cutting and where uh, you know linear TV has gone. Right, the opportunity to connect with audiences and streaming media is is incredible. Uh, mail and email is still effective if handled the right way. Text marketing is increasingly uh, in our surveys what consumers would rather, um, uh, how they would rather communicate uh, once they've identified the right um, retail partner. So, you know, understanding that that uh, that omni-channel um, sort of path to purchase is uh, is really important as well. And so we we look for all of that, and that's where the strategy comes from. It's all data driven. It's all omni-channel driven. And then we will figure out the right budget and then go from there and then constantly optimize. That's the other thing, right? Don't set and forget a budget. You need to be optimizing based on the results every single week if you could, uh, but certainly every month and every quarter. So probably more than you wanted, but that, that, that is, that's sort of how we think about things. And that's how I think a lot of folks, um, when they're attacking their advertising and marketing, should be thinking about you know, a data-driven, omni-channel approach to connecting with their consumers. Well, if you're interested in return on investment, you're going to be doing that, right? I mean, that's really the whole point is, is uh, you know, working off what the data tells you and then, and then going from there. And that's what you're specializing in. That's, and that's great work. Um, John Fitzpatrick is with us, folks, and he is with Force Marketing. He's the president and CEO of Force Marketing. Uh, so another key metric of long-term success is uh, – 
being able to make acquisitions. You just announced one. So, uh, and it's your first one, right? It's our first one, right? Awesome. You got to get that one right. It's, <laughs> and uh, don't mess that one up. Congratulations. Um, we, thank you. Yeah, we were really excited. I mean, it was a, uh, it was, it was actually as, as acquisitions go, even if you do them really well, they can be messy. And, um, and this one was, was, was sort of simple in the sense that the culture was an immediate fit. Uh, the, the culture they've been building out in Houston, Texas, GSM is the name of the company prior, uh, to, to shortening to GSM. They were GS marketing. They've been in business for 33 years, uh, built a phenomenal culture. Uh, you know, we were having interviews with, uh, their leadership team who had been there for 17 years and 22 years. And, and then the folks that work underneath them, eight and 12 and so on and so forth. And so we knew there was something special there. Oftentimes when you got a great culture, um, you've got happy clients. And so, uh, when we dug into the clients, they, they were, you know, really happy. They were brand enthusiasts to, um, to, to them. They, they were well connected to the business. They helped, they felt that their relationship with GSM was absolutely helping move their business forward. And so, um, all the things checked out and then, you know, the seller was motivated, um, uh, for all, a lot of the right reasons. Uh, and, and we just came to the table and said, look, here's our vision. Here's what we're trying to build out. Um, they they filled a gap for us in that they are focused on fixed ops marketing, which in our world that that stands for the service parts and accessories of a dealership. And uh, they had built great tech around connecting with consumers in the same way that I had just laid out, but all on the fixed ops side of our of our business, which really connects the the consumer um, lifecycle ownership. I mean, I, w- there's a stat that we knew about, and this is why we were focused on finding a fixed ops marketing company in auto. Which was if if a dealer sells you a car and they earn your first service appointment and you don't go to a Jiffy Lube or take your car somewhere else, you take it back to the dealership, that dealer is seven times more likely to earn your second vehicle purchase. That's how important the service business is to their overall business. That's how important it is to connecting the life cycle ownership of a vehicle from a consumer standpoint. So we knew that if our products and solutions could also tie in to what we call the back end of the, the dealership, the, the, uh, the, the fixed ops, the parts, service, and accessories, we would also improve the customer loyalty for the dealer, which would drive down the cost per acquisition. And so <clears throat> this was a, a very uh, intentional, pragmatic purchase for us. We, we thought long and hard. We looked at the space for about 18 months. Obviously, we took a nice long pause with COVID because no, uh, there wasn't much M&A uh, uh, work being had in, in, in last uh, you know, Q2. Uh, and everyone was just kind of hanging on and then recovering from their businesses. Uh, but then when, when, when that unthawed a little bit, we said, okay, now the time might be right to have some conversations. And sure enough, it was. And we, from start to finish, we, we closed the deal in, uh, in, in 48 days. So, I mean, as, as M&A goes, that's extremely quick. It just pointed to how well fit this this was for us. So we're, we couldn't be more excited about our new uh, family uh, in uh, in Houston, Texas, uh, and the great work that they're doing. We will keep the brand alive and well because they got great brand equity in our space. And uh, and now we're we're talking to our industry in terms of our family of brands at Force Marketing that can help them both at the front end of the dealership, helping them sell new and used vehicles, as well as the back end fixed stops. So really excited about this first one. Wow, that's that's uh, awesome. I mean, what I heard a lot of things there, but closing <laughs> closing an acquisition in forty eight days is amazing, uh, uh, and says something about uh, that that it was, I guess, meant to be, right? So, I think so, I, and fit, right? There, there was um, great sellers. Uh, they worked. We worked really well together. Um, we were able to make make it simple and make it clear, and we both stayed committed to that. And, um, you know, oftentimes in business, especially when there's a, you know, a sale of a business that, that, that can be tough to maintain and, and we were able to do it. And that's, that's why we were able to close. We were able to sort of cut out the nonsense, by the way, those 48 days were across, um, Christmas and new year's. So we had a, a bunch of holidays in there. Mm. Uh, we, I first met them in the beginning of December. We ended up closing January 31st. So, um, very, very quick. Wow. So talk about the, uh, you, you mentioned their culture. Uh, you're always interested in making sure your culture is, as the acquirer, is not only preserved but enhanced. Talk about your efforts there. 
Yeah. So that's what we're focused on right now is the full integration, right? Making sure that the tech is integrated well, the people are integrated well. Um, the beauty about this particular acquisition is there was almost no overlap um, from our current operations to this new operations. There was also a phenomenal leadership team out there in Houston, like I said, that had been there for quite some time. They stayed on. Um, that was an important part of the deal for us uh, because we're not doing away with the brand. Uh, we have no intentions whatsoever. We, we also didn't want to do away with any of the great people or any of the great clients. It was literally just, hey, keep running your play, which will allow us plenty of runway to figure out integration. Integration is usually the toughest piece. And because we didn't have to rush into integration, and we still don't, we're taking our time. Uh, my big word that I'm using in our leadership meetings is controlled growth. Because uh, obviously the buzz of an acquisition, you got a lot of hand raisers that want to jump in and you know test the products out, the new products that you have together. And we're, we're just saying, hey, we're, we're putting a short list together. But when the time's right, that's when we'll do that. There's no reason to, to force... Uh, no pun intended here, uh, you know, this, this integration. Let's make sure that GSM can run and, and handle their clients the way their clients have become accustomed to. Uh, let's make sure that Force and, and their brands can, can handle it. And then over a very intentional time frame, uh, we will work on integration. So we're being extremely thoughtful uh, around the integration of the companies um, because I, what I have seen in, in, in my learnings uh, of M and A, that's really where the magic is. Once you get beyond signature and you figure out how accretive is this acquisition, it was. It's usually in and around um, how well you operated an integration plan and uh, how intentional you were with it. And so we are being extremely intentional, and I think for the right reasons. Good words here from John Fitzpatrick, folks. Uh, he is the president and CEO of Force Marketing. Uh, John, you know, I have to get back to that question I'm tired of asking and people are tired of answering, which is uh, business uh, impact related to the pandemic. What does that look like for you? Oh, well, first it was brutal, right? Like one of the first things that anybody does is say pause or stop all of the marketing, all right? We all do it. And uh, whatever that dollar number is, take it to zero when, when something <laughs> like uh, the pandemic, you, know, a, 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 you know, global pandemic takes place. And same thing was true in the financial crisis. Uh, so we fielded about a thousand calls uh, from dealers all over the country uh, from about March 10th to March 20th saying, pause everything. Um, the good news was, uh, if there was any at that moment when you're get, fielding all those calls, was no one was canceling. They were just like, whoa, put everything on pause. Now we're a tech business, so you pay a tech fee and then a percent of the media that runs through the tech. So when there's zero dollars running through, the tech, they're also asking for a zero tech fee. So the business was incredibly impacted. Um, and it was like a light switch. It was, you know, it felt like it was overnight. And so the question was, what do you do? And um, we over communicated with our team. We did, you know, what a lot of business owners had to do. Some, you know, some folks got furloughed. Other folks took uh, temporary pay cuts. And we, we sort of just we're com in full communication every other day. Here's what's here's what we've learned. Here's what we're going to do. We put a contingency plan together. We got incredible buy-in around the table from our our, our, our clients. We were rem reminding them uh, why to hang on. No one's canceling us. We had zero clients cancel us in the months of March, April, May, and June. Uh, you know, every business has some degree of churn. You have clients that leave you for whatever reason. We had zero. It was, they just needed a, a partner that would hang on and get through. And I mm -hmm. think we saw this across a lot of categories. And uh, we were able to just uh, put a contingency plan together that would financially get us through. Um, we had our folks lean into it. And, um, and then when it expired, uh, we, were, we had a plan to sort of get everyone back to normal, if you will. Um, although, unfortunately... Even though the marketing dollars flipped off like a light switch, they have been coming back like a dial and a slow dial. Uh, and so dollars are just coming back sort of, okay, let's put you know, more dollars into play. Okay, let's put more dollars into, into play. And, uh, and that has been, um, that has been you know, something we've had to sort of work through. Uh, but again, very, very small cancellations, uh, you know, single digits, one hand. Uh, you can count the number of rooftops that have canceled us in the last 12 months. 
Majority of them are, we have stronger partnerships than ever before because now we've gone through a crisis together. So uh, there's a lot of love and respect there on both sides. And same thing with the cult, with the culture internally. And so um, now that we're looking at, you know, an incredibly strong uh, car market, uh, profitability for dealers uh, is, is, is higher than it's, it's been in decades. And, um, you know, when you have your, when your clients are making money, that's good for the business. That's the, that's great for the business that you, that you might have. And so, um, now we're in a really good spot. The, the timing of everything, especially at our first acquisition, um, couldn't really be better. And, uh, I think by and large, at least in the auto category, we seem to be beyond, uh, COVID-19 from a business perspective. That's great. Uh, now what, what, what do you see ahead for, um, automotive dealership marketing what does that look like here in 2021 and and going forward well i think that anytime there's a crisis like there was it it, it opens it opens everyone's eyes right and, I, and that's sort of the the blessing in disguise of moments like this certainly you know a lot of people lost their lives and they've been greatly affected by um the the, the tragedy that was covid19 um but from a business lens, most businesses um, that were able to survive have gotten better uh, that I've seen and that I've read about. And, and, and because they're really focused on, um, you know, not just the top line revenue dollar, but how much of that makes it to the bottom line of their, you know, in, their, in their pocketbooks. And uh, that's an important uh, metric for, for business owners to always stay aware of. And we, we saw it in auto as well. And so... Uh, to answer your question, I think there will be less spraying and praying because there's going to be less dollars that go into marketing and advertising. It was already inflated. Um, dealers uh, hopefully will fine tune that, continue to fine tune that rather, um, that area of their, of their business, um, that line item, that budget for marketing and advertising, and, and, and make sure they're better connected with their consumers. And uh, that's something we've been preaching for 15, 16 years. It's some of the clients that are still with us since day one uh, understand that we drive a lot of value in that category of their business. But I think by and large, dealers uh, will will become better communicators of their brand promise in their hyper-local markets and realize that it's not about the $499 uh, you know, offer on the you know, vehicle. Uh, it's oftentimes about all of the other things they're doing in the community, how their brand resonates with their local market, um, how they communicate through all of the channels that I discussed. Um, and, um, and if there's proper personalization in those communication channels relevant to where the consumer meeting the consumer, where they are in their journey, uh, they have a higher degree of earning the business. And I think that's one thing we all learned. And, uh, and I certainly see it in auto. So I think you'll see better communications from our dealer partners in all these, um, in all these markets um, as, a, as a result of uh, the pandemic. So, uh, John, this has been great and, and lots of great news and, and um, progress and success from you. Congratulations on that. Uh, what does the future look like for the company itself? And uh, you, do you have any more acquisitions that maybe are on the horizon? Uh, what what does that uh, trajectory look like for you? Well, we're focused on the first one first. But um, look, we've been looking at this space for the last two years as an opportunity to consolidate. It's extremely fragmented, uh, not just on the dealer side, but on the vendor side. Uh, there is a big opportunity for future M&A uh, opportunities for force. Um, there likely will be. Um, but right now, we're very focused on full integration of GSM and, and making sure that this works. So nothing immediate. Um, and, uh, and the future for Force really, you know, has is, is never been brighter. Everybody that works within our organization has learned that through this acquisition, we're able to fly higher and fly faster. And when you're able to do that, there's opportunity all over the place. And we've always been that way. We, are, we, we, we would prefer uh, to... Uh, create career opportunities and advancement opportunities internally before we try to find a, a net new person. We are, we, we very much believe that the folks that have already been committed to the business and have been trained up on the business should get the opportunity to grow with the business as the business grows. That's always been sort of part of our culture. 
And now that's just, that's just accelerated, right? Uh, when you go through uh, growing in organically by way of m and So great opportunity for the folks in Houston with GSM, great opportunity for the folks in Atlanta and everywhere else that, um, that, that we've got about 20, 25% of our, um, of our employees are, you know, in various states and various markets working, uh, from their home. Uh, and then we also have a small satellite office up in New York city. So, um, across the board, there's opportunity and, uh, and we're excited about that. And so are they. That's awesome. Uh, John Fitzpatrick folks, uh, the, uh, president, CEO, uh, founder of force marketing, uh, John, this has been great. And uh, I know that there are some folks out there that may want to be in touch. So let's get to the most important question. How can they do that? How can they be in touch and connect with you? Well, if you go to our website, forcemarketing.com uh, or forcemktg.com, you can get to any of our brands. Um, our technology business, we're hiring developers, Helix Technologies. Uh, it's drivehelix.com. Uh, GSM is gsmarketing.com out of Houston if you're in the Houston area. Um, we've got obviously the force brand that'll get you to any of them. And then we drive auto.com. We drive automotive is our brand that specializes in text, text, email, and mail. Uh, it's the nurturing part of the, the consumer experience where you're reminding them the, the different offers that you have at a dealership and, and sort of pulling the levers, um, when you see them come up. And so, um, in any of those brands, we have opportunities right now. So we would welcome that. I think there's a, there's a career section of the, uh, homepage on force marketing that they can go to that's just labeled join us. And, uh, we, we hope that, um, many of your listeners, uh, that, that are looking for career advancement and career opportunities will do just that. John Fitzpatrick folks with force marketing, John, it's been a pleasure. Congratulations on your success and thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me on John. I appreciate it. It's been great. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, folks, just a quick reminder, if you've got an administrative task in your business that you need to get off your plate, uh, that you need to let somebody else handle so you can handle important things like, uh, customer service and, and building your revenue. Uh, my suggestion is go check out office angels, officeangels.us operated by chief executive angel, SES Cabido. They handle administrative task, bookkeeping, other items that you as an owner shouldn't really be dealing with on a day-to-day basis. And SE has angels that fly in, get the job done and fly out. And they do it on an, on an ongoing or as needed basis. And they do it virtually. So, you know, a pandemic does not scare them in any way or change what they do. So, uh, you can go to officeangels.us or my suggestion is just give SE a call. 770-442-9246. First, tell her I suggested you call her. And I'm suggesting this, by the way, because I use her services. Um, and explain what your problem is. And uh, SE will talk out a good solution for you. 770-442-9246. SES Escobedo at Office Angels. And folks, as we wrap up, just a quick reminder that we are on all the major podcast apps. You can find us on um, uh, all of them, Apple, Google, Spotify, what have you. And uh, just search North Fulton Business Radio on any of those apps. When you find the show, we would love it if you would give us a five-star review. Now, it's not about me. It's not about Business Radio X. It's about great folks like John Fix. Fitzpatrick and force marketing and all the other 300 and, uh, or the uh, over 600 guests that we've had over the last, uh, almost five years in, uh, in about 335 or whatever shows. So that's what we would love it if you would do, because it helps, helps, uh, folks find the show. So it, it, they'll find the great guests that we've had. And we, you can connect with us on social media, North Fulton BRX on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, and probably some other ones I don't know about. <laughs> so, uh, there you go. So for my guest, John Fitzpatrick, I'm John Ray. Join us next time here on North Fulton business radio.